Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode here in NHL 24. So in last episode we had the draft and resign stage. It was kind of a tough draft for us because we decided we needed to make some changes based on the fact our roster probably wouldn't have had enough cap space to resign everybody. So we flipped away a couple of long term players on the team. We've traded away Philip Groshek to the Carolina Hurricanes. So it'll be exciting to see what he could do on a different organization. He was with us for a very long time. Very good, useful player, but at the same time, we don't have any use for him anymore because Walter is going to be probably jumping to our second line. But Groshek had a great career with us. 808 games with 705 points, and he was almost point per game in the postseason. So good luck to him in Carolina. We also decided to flip away our RFA center, in Mr. Goldman. So Goldman has been sent to the New York Rangers. So I have no idea where they're going to be slotting him in as a second or third line center. However, they are going to be paying him 7.565 for the next five seasons. He was a pending RFA, so they basically just gave him a five-year deal, which is a good little trial run for him, I think. So yeah, we made those trades and we acquired back some first round picks, which is great. So we do have more draft capital for future years, which is always nice or things that we could tack on into other trades. But you can see our team only has $10 million in cap space. So I guess technically we could have brought back Goldman if we really wanted to. But uh, at the same time, I didn't know if he was going to hurt us long term. So now we have two first round picks for the upcoming year in 2039. And then that Carolina pick we got from the Groshek deal is for 2040. So hopefully those end up being something decent for us when we get to that point in time. Also, I might be drinking a lot of water in this episode. It's a really hot day today. It's 44 degrees. I don't know why I'm still wearing this Winnipeg Jets jersey when it's warm like that. But um, yeah, I'm going to be probably trying to rush through this episode as much as possible. Because the hotter it gets throughout the day, uh, the warmer I'm likely going to get with this jersey on. So anyways, there is that. Excited to see what ends up happening in free agency this year and as well. Because obviously there's probably some former players there that could sign with other teams. And also excited to just get up and starting another season. Because obviously we've won a ton of Stanley Cups, but there has been some turnaround. So it's going to be interesting to see if this team's able to maintain that. Or if they're going to fall off a little bit or not. So anyways, let's get into the one and only comment we got from last episode, and then we will see what ends up happening. So that comment is from Sanrotaku. who says, I love those later round elite picks. Even if Bohms doesn't develop past the 75 or 76, he could be an okay depth piece in case of injury or as a change of pace should a playoff run start to turn sour. Fredarski might be a good trade bait for this year's deadline, or you could let him walk after the playoffs. You could probably find someone who is at least 80 to 81 overall next year in free agency who would be cheaper. Don't forget to find an assistant coach. Anyone with 60% or greater scheme fit should be a good one if you uh, can find one. So, uh, yeah, we definitely need to find ourselves another coach because we did lose our assistant coach. Was it? Did he just say? Yeah, our assistant coach. Uh, our assistant coach decided that he wanted to go on to future endeavors and find a team that uh, would actually hire him as a head coach, which I honestly understand considering we've won so many championships. Why stay an assistant coach when you could be a head coach of another team? So, He's uh, welcomed that challenge. We do still have Viviristo as our head coach, which is great, and Jenkins as our associate. So the coaching staff is still pretty good, but we obviously just need ourselves an assistant. And we'll probably sign ourselves, obviously, a goalie coach as well, just to make sure we're as good as possible. So that's definitely uh, the top things on our radar this offseason. However, he was saying maybe trading away Vernarski would be a good thing at this year's trade deadline. And I don't really know if I want to trade Vernarski. I think I might let him walk, to be honest. I really like Vernarski. He's probably one of the best defensemen on this team other than Goddard and Vandermeer. Backer's really good defensively, but Vernarski has a little bit of a different edge to him with him. Uh, he's scored some pretty big goals in overtime. He's also played really nice in overtime scenarios. Like, obviously, that uh, Blunden overtime goal, uh, he had a nice little walk and then got a great shot away that caused that rebound, but... He's been kind of like a quite under, like, one of those type of guys that kind of fly under the radar, so to speak, because 174 points as a two-way defenseman, not too bad. Obviously, he's not the best offensive guy in the world, but he's also a plus 145, so he chips in with some goals, and he also picks up some points, also plus minus is really good. And then his playoff numbers as well are usually pretty good, too. Like, I think he actually, yeah, he shoots better in the playoffs by 2%, so... His shooting percentage goes from a 5.7 to a 7.7, .7, so he's more of a playoff player than he is a regular season type of guy. 44 points in 135 games as opposed to 174 and 648. I don't know if that's better point per game wise or not. 
But either way, he's a really fun defenseman. I would prefer him walking to free agency, or instead, what I might do is holding on to him, and maybe we decide to trade away Scarlet at uh, next year's draft if we want to free up cap space to re-sign Vernarski. However, Vernarski is likely going to be asking for more money than Backer is. Like he's going to be asking for five million plus. So maybe it's not really worth it to hold on to him at that point. So we'll definitely make that decision when we come to that uh, time. But for right now, obviously, we want to keep the roster like this. So I don't remember if there was anything I needed to sign in free agency. I think there was one thing I needed to sign because we have six defenders here. I just want to double check. Yeah, we probably need like a seventh defenseman at least. Forward wise, we're good. So a seventh defenseman is probably what we're going to be looking to get here in free agency or top six defenseman. We already have how many right-handed defensemen on this team? One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's probably good to find ourselves another left-handed defenseman that can play on that top six with Scarlet, and then Reese could be depth. Reese is listed as a top six now, which is uh, not great because he might lose morale due to ice time because of not playing. Hmm, maybe I find somebody with the exact same overall as him, so that way it's a little bit of internal competition. That's not a br uh, bad idea. Yeah, that might be what we'd look to is a 77 overall top six defenseman just so we could have some internal competition between the two of them. Kind of run one, and if it doesn't work well, change the other, that type of thing. Anyways, let's get to the coaching stuff first because obviously that's the most important thing we have to do this offseason is to do the coaching stuff. So we already have – actually, oh, yeah, we had a scout retire too, didn't we? Yeah, we did, I think. Because normally we'd have 20 out of 20. Did we have a scout retired? I feel like we did. Yeah, so I think we all we have was an OHL scout. I offered a contract already to him, I think, in last episode, correct? I just got to double check on this stuff. Uh, I guess I should go back to the scouts first, though. I think I already offered one in last episode. Yes, I did. Okay, yes. So McPherson will be the OHL scout. That's right. Okay. I had to make sure I was actually doing what I was doing. Okay, so we need ourselves an assistant coach and a goalie coach. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want somebody with a good scheme fit, obviously. So let's go through the top of these coaches and see who has a 60-plus. There's a 65, so Salvin Rowers probably is really good. 600 career wins as a coach. But obviously, I think he would prefer to be an, a, a head coach on a different team. Uh, but if we're looking at, like, a full-on assistance, Kubos almost might be. He's also, hey, he's got a losing record, which is weird. So maybe his assistant coach would be better for him. Because of the fact he has a losing record as a head coach. There's also Peter Prusak, though, who's good defensively. I actually don't mind that option. He is an associate coach, too. Obviously, he's a little bit lower end of a coach. He's not an A coach. However, he is good at the PK and everything. He's pretty balanced. His teaching is a little bit low. But we don't need to be teached, really. Or taught, I should say. Uh, but him being 66%. Hmm. Where was he coaching before? In the AHL with Lehigh Valley. So he mean that means he's coached some pretty good prospects probably with Lehigh Valley because obviously Philadelphia, very good team last season. So uh, yeah, let's bring in Peter Prusik. I know he's not necessarily the best coach in the, op in the world, but he does have good team fit. So him as an assistant coach will give him his first taste of NHL action on a bench and maybe he becomes something decent as a coach. And he's also a lot younger too, right? He's only 58, it said. Yeah, 58 years old, so maybe he could develop into being something decent before he retires. There's some other older or younger options too, but we'll take him. And then we need a goalie coach, which means let's go to teaching. And let's take this goalie coach, who's only 47 years old, probably going to retire. But we'll take Zden uh, what is it? Zdenica. Zdenica Dvorak. Oh, interesting name. Okay. We'll take you as our NHL goalie coach. Even though you probably never played in the NHL since you're a female, but still, we'll take you. All right, so there is the coaching taken care of. We got our scout taken care of, which means now we just need to get into that free agent signing with the cast base we have, and then we can start simulating up to next season and seeing if those scenes accept or not. So in terms of defensemen, like I said, we only need really a 77 top six defender, probably that's left-handed preferably because we have a lot of right-handers. So, or we could you find somebody that's like a depth defenseman, maybe like this guy. Alexander Kuhlman. Really good shot blocking and stick checking. Defensive awareness is a little low. How's he played in the NHL? Eight games, one goal, even zero. Minus two and two playoff games. Hmm. He's only 27 though, which is not bad. 
There's also, for other left-handed 77s, there's Kerman. Vesa Kerman. Has he ever played a game? No, he's never played a game. A long time uh, Hershey Bear, apparently. And he's actually listed as a top six, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Taylor Sweetland, DFD. Really good shot blocking and stick checking. Not too bad defensive awareness. <clears throat> kind of a good shutdown defender. Played 13 career games with one assist, minus three in those 13 games. Never played in the playoffs. He was playing with Carolina two years ago. Has also played for the Chicago Wolves. It's 28. Hmm. It's a tough decision to see what we want. There's also the Lalonde who could play both right and left, but he's a right-handed D-man. I don't know if I want a right-handed D-man, no. 15 games of six points, though, is fantastic. Playoff-wise, never played a game. But he looks like he could definitely bring some offensive punch. <clears throat> because 18 points in 21 playoff games in 2035-36. 72 points when you're in the AHL as well. Huh. I don't think he could do that in the NHL, but he definitely could do that at the AHL level, which is nice. He was a first-round pick of the Buffalo Sabres way back. Hmm. That's an interesting one. You know what? I think I'll sign this guy. Just to see if he could uh, do anything. Obviously, if he doesn't do anything at the NHL level offensively, he could do it at the AHL level. Like, if we need to send him down, so be it. Um, he wants a two-year, two-way deal. You know what? We'll give it to him. He's only 26. This guy is not that bad, to be honest. So, he might be only a 7th D, but we'll sign him up for two years. And just give ourselves a little bit of depth at the defensive position. So, that's all we're going to sign. That is all we are going to sign because we don't really need anything else on this roster. Let's advance a few days and see if we get that coach, that scout. Are those two coaches, the scout and obviously the free agent defenseman. Um, I'm going to edit my trading block just so I don't get thrown any offers this offseason because I'm honestly not going to probably look into any of these trades because our roster is good the way it is and I don't feel like there's anything I want to flip out of it right now. Maybe at the in next season, but right now I want to keep the team the exact same. If possible. Well, I guess I should also show you guys the prospects we drafted in the last episode. Because I completely forgot to do that after Sanor Taku mentioned about it. So I'll go do that as well before we continue to simulate too much. Because we had an interesting draft. It wasn't really the best draft in the world. But we did get some more steals. Which will help our prospect pool for the future potentially. So excited to see what those guys end up being like. But if we go to contracts here. And we go to the unsigned tab. Uh, we drafted, let me just sort this by age so I can actually remember who we drafted. So we got Quint, we got another defensive prospect, we got LeClaire, who's a top 6'4 prospect. Same with McDermott, I think. Was McDermott this year? No, he was last year. It's hard to remember now. We got Bohms, though. Bohms is exciting because he's a medium elite grinder. So I'm excited to see if he can develop into being anything. Will be an interesting uh, decision if he's like a bottom 6 guy at some point or a depth forward. And then in terms of other prospects we drafted, I honestly cannot remember. Maybe I already signed some of them through the ELCs, but I think some of them are like Heinonen, who's low elite, if I remember right. But yeah, you can see our unsigned prospect list. In terms of potential, we still have a lot of good potential prospects. So we are still drafting well, we're developing well, and we're winning a Stanley Cup a lot. So we are cruising in terms of building this team into being a dynasty. There is our goalie coach. Welcome aboard, Zdenica. Or Zdenka? Zdenka? Yeah, probably Zdenka. That's kind of an interesting name. Peter Prusik didn't want to join our staff chemistry because apparently it's poor. He And apparently he thinks we're, we're a toxic environment after winning the Stanley Cup. We're not toxic. We're maybe a little bit arrogant from all the cup wins, but we're definitely not toxic. But he decides to go to Coachella Valley over uh, coaching in the NHL. That's ridiculous, man. That's ridiculous. I mean, maybe he likes the heat of Coachella Valley a bit, but... That's interesting. Okay, well, we need to still find ourselves our next coach for the assistant spot. I am really surprised he wanted to go to Coachella Valley over us. <laughs> That's kind of offensive, though. You don't want to go to a... a oh, Jack Eichel. Mm. Get Jack Eichel as a coach. It's kind of weird that his pro, uh, picture and still is him in his Buffalo jersey, though. Jack Eichel is a coach. He's only 42 years old, too, so he could develop into being an actual head coach at some point. You know what? We'll get Jack Eichel in as the assistant coach. So be it. So be it. Why not? Welcome aboard to Jack if he wants to accept. But yeah, the fact that a, a coach would rather go to an AHL team than a team that's won this many Stanley Cups is actually kind of ridiculous. 
Like, you think he would take that, uh, even if there was a toxic environment, he would join us. There is the scout, so we'll go on board to Ronnie McPherson, and Cesar Lalonde has joined us as a depth slash top six defenseman, so that is great. And you just need to know about Jack Eichel. He does not like the size of our market. Why is nobody wanting to sign with us as an assistant coach? I'm just going to pay him a lot of money and then he'll come to us because Jack Eichel likes the money, right? <laughs> well, also the fact that uh, we have the money too to do so. Come on, Jack. you got to be our assistant coach. Let's give you a lot more money than that. There you go. 2060, you'll be our assistant coach. Just join us. I know we're a small market, but... And Winnipeg is a city that a lot of people apparently don't like, but still, just join us, and you'll be happy here. You'll get paid some money, and maybe you'll win a Stanley Cup, because obviously you won one in Vegas, but still. Technically not in this universe. Actually, no, I guess in this universe, technically, you would have had one, so. There you go. So Jack Eichel is board on board as an assistant coach for this team, so it'll be weird to see him behind the bench, potentially, if we win another Stanley Cup. So let's simulate to the beginning of next season and see what we're rocking with in terms of of our lineup. I guess I honestly have no idea what our lines are going to look like compared to prior seasons. And then I'll also take a look at like Carolina and the Rangers and just see where Goldman and Groshek are like projected to play. And then we'll also simulate maybe up to like December the 1st or halfway part of the season. Because obviously it would be good to get a good chunk of the season done because our team should be pretty automatic in terms of winning games. All right, so we're back up here at the start of whatever year this is at this point. So let's adjust our lineups and see what we're rocking with. Let's just make sure we have everybody in the right uh, areas. So in terms of goalies, Mills and Berkfist, both of them are starting goalies. At one point, we're going to have to flip between the two of them or try and decide to trade one of them. It's probably not till next offseason, but Mills is a pending RFA, I believe. Berkfist is already signed, obviously, for a number of years. In terms of defense, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's good. Just make sure there's nobody else. Nobody else. Okay, good. In terms of other players, we got four there. That's definitely the best right wingers. Yep, that's good. Left wingers, we got three, six, or wait, that's five, nine forwards. Okay. Timmins is definitely better than Mashenko, so I am going to send down Mashenko, I think. However, Timmins is listed as a fourth liner. Hmm. We might have to make some decisions here, too. I'll just do that for now. Mashenko could go back down. Timmins could come up. And then centers. We are looking good because Baker's not ready yet. So we'll go like that. We'll go best lines. I don't want to have, like, some people scratched. So if they are scratched and I don't want them scratched, we might send them to the AHL just so they don't get scratched. Okay, now we need to actually go to edit lines here and get this set up properly. So the goalies are going to be good already, obviously, based on overall defense. I'm not running Vanamir and Goddard together because obviously they're both OFDs. So I need to make this Backer and Vanamir, Vernarski and Goddard, and a Scarlet and Lalonde works. But is it better to put Reese there? That's the exact same thing. Reese is listed as the top six. Lalonde is listed as a depth D. I think we're going to go with that just because of the positioning. In terms of our actual lineup itself, though, this is going to be interesting. So Irving to the top line with Ekholm and Jacuizzi. We go with Walter, Wilson, and Bickle. Blunden with Hansen and Bulbrook. And then Lannon with Hurd and Timms. Reason is a scratch. I don't really want him scratched. But Lannon is definitely good to be in the lineup. He's actually listed as a third-line scoring forward now, of course. We might have to do that. But Reason will lose morale, probably. But everybody else is pretty much in their role, so... Hmm. Huh. I'll probably keep Reason as a depth option for now, but if he loses morale, we might throw him in the lineup temporarily and make some decisions that way. Lone as a depth is good. We need one more depth forward. We might actually have to sign somebody because I don't think I have somebody I want to call up here. Mishenko, I guess, would be that other depth forward, so we'll do that. Never mind. Go best AHL lines again for a second. So now we should be pretty much good to go in terms of the setup. Yeah, that's good. I think Bullbrook is going to lose a little bit of morale being down there, but if he's on the power play, he should be okay. So Irving, Jacuzzi, Ekholm, Goddard, Vandermeer. 
I don't know if I want Goddard and Vandermeer on the same unit. I'd prefer probably to put Irving on the point, and then we put, uh, instead of Goddard on this unit, we put Walter. And then we will probably put, uh, instead of Walter on this unit, we'll put Blunden. Where is Blunden here? We'll put Blunden here, and then Bulbrook should be up here. Landon's going to come out, and then this is going to be Goddard, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that everybody's getting as much ice time as they can. This is somehow a minus two, though. Just kind of weird. Oh, well. We'll leave it for now. Hmm. Okay, so that's all good. Penalty kill. Still looking strong, but obviously not as strong as it has been in the past with Goldman. So that's good. We'll keep the rest of that the same, I think. I think that's good. I think that's good. So basically, we would run this as our team for the season. I think that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Yeah, because you can see why we had to like uh, get rid of Groshek, because Walter, being a second line forward, he needs that ice time. Blunden eventually will be top six ready as well. Aiden Irving should be retiring in the next few years, hopefully. I don't say hopefully, actually, because I really like this guy, but in a sense, if we want to get our guys up there like Blunden into the top six, Irving retiring would need to happen, pretty much, because I don't want to trade him away. Okay, I think that's pretty much good. I think that's good. Okay, so that is good. Let's actually go to... What was I going to take a look at again? I don't think there was anything I actually wanted to take a look at before we start sim lane. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, let's get through the preseason, and then we'll take a look at where Caroline, uh, what Caroline and the Rangers are looking like, so that way we can see if Groshek is in the lineup, uh, or in the top line, or whatever in Carolina, and where Goldman's fitting in with the Rangers, because... Obviously, I'd like to see kind of what our former players are up to at that point. So, let's go to the end of the preseason, see how we do in it. We should be pretty automatic in terms of winning games this season. Uh, because we've obviously been a very good team the last number of years. We've won a lot of presence trophies, a lot of Stanley Cups. So, should be pretty automatic that we're good. We had a 4-3 and three preseason, which is probably one of our worst preseasons to date. But, still decent enough. Who led us some points out of curiosity? Mark Bulbrook. Bulbrook could have a pretty good year this year. Uh, I didn't even realize our first game of the season, of course, is against the Carolina Hurricanes. Are you serious? They had a 6-0-1 preseason, too. But, of course, we're literally taking on Groshek in his first game as a Carolina Hurricane. You think the game set that up perfectly just because we are trading? We traded with them? Let's take a look at where he's fitting in in Carolina. And then we might actually slow simulate this first game because it might be kind of fun. Uh, yeah, he's a top liner. He's playing with a 79 overall 18-year-old medium elite that just went second overall. So that's uh, kind of interesting. We'll see if that guy develops really well next to Groshek and also Silas Neal, who's only 21 and was drafted first overall in 2035. So that top line is actually pretty damn nice. And then there's obviously our former player in Yakula, who's on the second line there. Caroline's got a bit of a weird team. But they definitely could develop really well, potentially, with some of these guys. But their goaltending is not very good, so they definitely have a long way to go before I think they're going to be competitive because of that. Which is likely good for us because we have their 2040 first, not this upcoming first, but next year. I still think Groshek could do well on that top line for sure. Because they do have some good players in that top six, so. Should be on their power play too? Uh, yep, he's on their power play, of course. Alright, what about Goldman? Where is he fitting in with the New York Rangers? Uh, he is currently... A uh, right winger. Okay, I don't know why they're using him as a right winger. Probably because of Ebbett. But, hmm. Kind of surprised they didn't use him at the center spot. Considering that face-offs are 88 to 81. But, I'm not a mathematician, so. <laughs> uh, okay. Second line right wing. How was his preseason with the Rangers? Four assists in five games. We'll see if Goldman breaks out with the Rangers. Because he was always getting overshadowed by other centers, so. I think he could definitely pan out to being pretty good there for them. And then Carolina, Groshek had five points in seven games in the preseason. Okay. Okay, so we'll do a slow simulation for this first game just because it's Groshek's first game as a Carolina Hurricane. And obviously, we respect a ton out of him. And then we'll obviously simulate probably to like December the 1st or something like that. Maybe January the 1st even. Depends how long the episode is at that point. But we're going to go through this somewhat quick. I just want to see if Groshek scores against us in the first game of the season or not. Because it'll be kind of funny if it did happen. First period. 
2-0 us. Jamal Hurd scores in the first game of the season, and Esteban Walter scores the first goal of the 2038-39 season. That's exactly what I'm hoping for, because like I said, he basically is stepping up to where Groshek was before this. I believe Walter is actually a pending RFA, so we should probably look at giving him a max term contract soon. I guess it depends on his season, but still, he's going to want a lot of money if he plays really good. Second period. 2-2. Two, two. Carolina comes back. Wertherspoon and, of course, Philip Groshek had to score against us. <clears throat> I knew he was going to score against us. I just knew it. Shots are 27-18, but it's a 2-2 two, two game. What's going to happen in the third period of this first game of the season? We lose 4-2. Yakola scores the game-winning goal and then Reed Schaefer, the empty netter. Damn, man. We blew a 2-0 lead. That's not a great way to start the season, but still, I wanted to take a look at that just for fun. Just for a little bit of extra stuff for the series. But let's go to November the 1st now and see if we can respond after that 4-2 to loss. Because obviously, losing the first game, not ideal, but it could have been because we slow simulated that. Walter Timmins has already been injured two games into his career with some back spasms. So at least that will give some playing time to a different guy for the fourth line. But still, Walter Timmins already getting injured is not really a great sign. Hopefully he's not super injury prone. And we're off to a little bit of a rocky start to start this season. We're allowing a little bit more goals than I've liked. Uh, Reason, was he already dropping or no? Was he losing morale? No, okay, I don't think so. We'll take him out. Timmins will come back in because Timmins is back to full health. That's good. We'll continue to simulate here. Can't see what's going on because of this game is dumb sometimes. <laughs> Two more games for this month. Um, getting a lot of trade offers, which is kind of annoying, but oh well. 9-5 win, a 7-2 win. We're 5-3. and three. That's not too bad. Obviously, it's not as great as we've been in the past, but still, we've had, definitely had a good offensive start to the year, it looks like. Defensively, been a little bit rough, but that's okay. It'll probably find itself at some time soon. Let's go another month. We'll probably go to January the 1st or halfway point of the season because this team should be mostly on cruise control, but Jordan Goddard has separated his shoulder. That's not good. That's not good. Obviously, he's our second best defenseman behind Vandermeer. Great offensively. But a separated shoulder. Oof, that's uh, not great. We'll go replace player, but that's a pretty substantial blow to the defense. Hopefully, we don't drop a ton of games because of that. We've lost three in a row since that Goddard injury. But then there's two wins in a row. Kopeski, Baker, and Darmore for Cope. No, thank you. I don't need to cope any more than I already have. <laughs> Don't need that copium or whatever the heck that uh, friggin' meme is. Alright, so Goddard is back. That's good. Our team managed to win still a good chunk of games without him, but still, that is not the type of injury we'd like to see. How did Lalone do out of curiosity? One assist in nine games, plus three. Not bad. I'll take that. I will take that. Obviously, he doesn't need to bring the offense he had in the AHL, but he could bring some good defense, and that will always be nice. Okay, final few games of the month, another win there, and another win there. We are now 15-5-1. Our team is starting to cook a bit. We are now leading our division. We have played the most games in the division for more than some of these teams. Actually tied with some teams. Huh, okay. But 31 points right now. We are definitely still one of the best teams in the league, even after trading White Groshek and Goldman, which is great. How's Carolina and the Rangers doing out of curiosity so far? Rangers are battling for a wild card spot, maybe. I don't know. They might not actually be even close to the playoffs. Right now. Actually, they're two points back, but they are off to a little bit of a slow start for the New York Rangers, which is good because we have, obviously, their first-round pick, I think. And then Carolina is second last in the Metropolitan Division. So, obviously, we don't have their pick this year, which kind of might have been a mistake. But having their pick next year, I don't think they're going to be good still next year. They could be, but obviously, I don't think they're going to be super good, just based on that. All right, let's go to the end of this month and see what we're looking like at that point. There's another win, another win. Jesus Christ, man, our team. This team is just cooking every year, and this head coach is friggin' cracked. He's going to go down as one of the best coaches in NHL history at this point. How many wins have we had in a row here? I, uh, I got to take a look at this here quickly. How much wins have we had in a row? Because I feel like we've won a ton. So we've won four games there, three games there, so that's seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 games in a row, I think, if I'm not mistaken. 14 game winning streak. Wow, okay. Well, this team's cooking. Can we win our 15th game in a row? 
Yes, we do. 16 games in a row. 17 games. 18 games. 19 games. What the hell is happening? 20 and 21. I think we've won 21 games in a row. We had a perfect month of December. 28, 5, and 1. What the hell, man? This team is insane. I don't want to look at player stats yet, but Ekholm's already got 50 points. That's why I locked him up. But uh, did we just win 21 games in a row? Or am I just friggin' like cracked? Yeah, look at that stat. Holy crap. The Jets have beaten the Kings and continue to roll as they've won their last 21 in a row. I think that might be my longest win streak in this game. That is insanity, man. That's like a quarter of a season win streak. Well, this team is definitely cooking a little bit of a slow start in the first month, but since then have been insane. 28-5-1 is 34 games, so we'll go seven more games and see if we could push it to 28 wins in a row. Probably not, but you never know. So, seven more games, so there's three, five, six, seven. Okay, so after a back-to-back -back with the Chicago Blackhawks, of course. Let's see, can we continue our win streak? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. That's 23 in a row, 24 in a row, 25 in a row. 26 in a row, 27, and then we lose. 27 wins in a row. Is that an NHL record? Because I think we might have just had the longest win streak in NHL history, so we're breaking all the NHL records here. Let me take a look at that and Google search some stuff here. Longest NHL win streak. I can't remember how long that win streak was. The Pittsburgh Penguins won 17 games in a row. So you're saying we have the longest win streak by 10 games? Jeez, man, what the heck? Okay, okay. <laughs> 27 wins in a row, though. Ended by the Blackhawks in a 3-2 loss. They're 30-11-1, so they've been cooking, too, apparently. But uh, we're 34-6-1 halfway through the year. Goddamn, this team didn't even slow down. Even a ton after getting away to Groshek and stuff. Wow, okay. And Ekholm up to 56 points halfway through the year. I think we definitely need to look and see if Walter needs an extension before next episode. Because if he's doing really well at this point, he's going to want to get paid some big bucks. And we might not have the big bucks unless we get offload somebody like Bickle. So we got to be make, making some smart decisions before that point. Okay, so entire league-wise so far, we're currently the number one team in the league. Uh, the Ducks are number two. Chicago is number three. Kind of surprised that Chicago's doing so well this year, though, because I thought they fell off, but I guess Connor Bedard's doing well this year. San Jose up there. Where's Philadelphia after last year? Where is Philadelphia? A wild card team. They're going to win the Stanley Cup this year. Because last year, going from as good as they were to a wild card team, they're going to win the Cup this year. That's my guess right now. And if I'm right on that, you guys could, uh, I don't know. You could do whatever you want with that. We are the best offensive team in the league by a large margin, by 11 goals currently. We've played the least amount of games of most of these teams. 4.59 goals per game. We're allowing 2.8, which is currently the third best in the league. So Bergfist has been a good regular season goalie again. And it seems like Mills is doing well as a backup. Our power play is the best in the league at 30.5%, even though we just traded away one of our best power play guys in Groshek. And our penalty kill is currently... One of the best as well at 85.3%. We already have 11 shorthanded goals this season, which is more than double the next closest team, the Vancouver Canucks and a bunch of other teams. We are 16-5 on home ice, 18-1-1 on the road. What the hell, man? <laughs> I feel like I've cracked the code with this game right now. God damn. Wow. Well, this team is dominant. We'll take a look at some player stats and see how dominant here now. And, oh my goodness, this depth scoring looks kind of insane. What the hell, man? We'll take a look at the team as a whole afterwards as well. But Ekholm, 56 points. He's been fantastic. Bickle's on 53. Wasn't expecting Bickle to have that great of a year this year because he's not been the best over the last few seasons. But he's on pace for 106 points. So shout out to Jerry Bickle, who might be getting his trade value bumped up. Uh, Hansen on 22 points has been good. Heard on 17 points and 11 goals is better than expected as well. So shout out to Jamal. Uh, left wing wise, Walter on 44 points, 22 goals and 22 assists. He's on pace for a 40 goal season. So, hmm, hmm. I might have to give Walter his eight year extension or something like that before next episode or at next episode. Let me know what you guys think. We'll take a look and see how much he's demanding right now. And we'll try the 85% trick or something. 
Uh, Blunden in his first full NHL season, 24 points in 41 games. Only 11 goals so far, but he's off to a good start. Obviously, he was better last year in the playoffs, but I think he's definitely going to be a good player as time goes on. Landon on 13 points. Timmons on 11, not bad. And Reason with one goal in two games. Looks like he is losing morale because of ice time. Damn, man. Hmm. Do I trade him away for a depth forward? I want your guys' opinion on that. Because obviously, him losing morale, he's going to want ice time. We could probably find ourselves a depth forward for that cost. That isn't going to complain. Hmm. I don't know how Blunden is a minus with our team being as dominant as they are. But I'm not going to question it. Right wing wise, Aiden Irving on 53 points. He's already got 32 goals halfway through the year. He is on pace for a 64 goal season at the age of 33. And yeah, he's already to 1,053 points, almost at 600 career goals, two games away from 1,000 as well. God damn, this guy's a goat. Jacquezzi's also on 53 points, only 12 goals, but 41 apples. Wilson on 44 points, and Bullbrook's on 29 points. He's also minus five, huh? But he's okay with his ice time, which is good. Defensively, Vandermeer's on 43 points as well. He's over a point per game. Goddard's on 20 points. Backer's on 10 points. Another plus season for him. He's already over a career plus 100, and he's only played three years. Crazy. Reese on nine points. Vernarski only on seven points and a plus 12. So Vernarski is definitely slowing down this year, which is kind of weird, but at least it's the last year of his contract. Maybe it's because he doesn't have power play time. I don't know if he had power play time the last few years, though. Doesn't really look like it too much. Hmm. I don't know. Scarlet on 5 points plus 16, and Lalonde with one assist in 9 games. Goals anyways, kind of curious on this. A 9-10 save percentage from Burkris. He's 27-3-1 right now. Only the one shutout, but a 9-10 save percentage and a 2.68 goals against. And Mills is pretty much putting up exact same numbers in terms of save percentage, but he's got a worse goals against. But still, both of them have been good. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that. So now I wanted to look at the team as entire as a whole, as a Fords first, and then we'll take a look at defense. But right now, we have how many guys on 10 plus goals? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 guys out of our 12 Fords have over 10 goals. The only guys that don't are the 4th liners. Is Landon okay with his ice time? Not really. See, we could trade away Landon to get a Reason into that 4th line spot, potentially. If we want to, because Lannan is another type of guy that's more offensively driven. And I would prefer a fourth liner that's more defensive, like Reason, kind of. But Reason also actually is a power forward, so never mind. Hmm. Yeah, that's a weird decision. But yeah, anyways, our first, uh, our, all our goal scorers have been fantastic so far. And Aiden Irving's got 10 more than the next closest, and he's the oldest guy on this team. And an assist, Bickle's leading right now. So we have nine forwards with 10 plus goals. We have one defenseman with not, uh, more than 10 goals. Which means we have 10 people in total on this roster that are scoring like pretty much like point per game around. I think. How much people are over point per game on this team? We have a total of 7 players over point per game halfway through the year. And then everybody else is a little bit less. But obviously still the 20 points and such are helpful. So... And the best plus minus is a plus 36. The worst is a minus 5. Yeah, Blunden and Bulwark are the only minus guys on the team, but that's okay. Hmm. Here's on the stats across the league right now, too. Just for a little brief look. Leo Carlson leading right now. Jeez. Most goals so far. Aiden Irving's leading the league in goals only by one. But still, Aiden Irving has played the least amount of games out of a bunch of these guys. Is Aiden Irving going to win a Richard this year? That would be amazing. Considering where he was drafted and all that. What about the best defenseman so far? Vandermeer's leading again. Vandermeer might be up there for another Norris. Which is awesome. And goalie-wise, obviously, we know Burkus is up there and wins. But what about save percentage and such? Lad was up there for Anaheim. Oh, damn. Yeah, Lad's actually been really good. Yeah, Lad's probably your Vesna favorite right now with a 932 save percentage. But he's probably going to drop off. But those are elite numbers through 34 games. Best rookie so far is currently Barry Teal of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hmm. Blunden is currently actually up there in the rookie race, which is nice. So he could win rookie of the year, but he needs to have a strong second half. 
So there is that. I think that's almost all we wanted to take a look at, right? Oh yeah, the uh, contract stuff with Walter. I definitely need to take a look at that. I also want to take a look at the draft class. And I actually need to take a look at where the Rangers are currently in the standings too. Because I meant to do that, but I almost completely forgot. I'm just curious if uh, they're actually a playoff team or not. Uh, they are. They are the second best team in the Eastern Conference now. All right. So Goldman might be doing some good damage in New York. Actually, I'll take a look at that too, how Goldman and Groshek are fitting in with New York and Carolina as well. Hopefully they're picking up a good amount of points because I, I do want them to do well, but I don't want their teams to do well, so to speak. So Groshek so far in Carolina. He's just around point per game. He's doing pretty similar to what he was doing with us. 41 points in 42 games. Obviously, he hasn't played the playoffs yet, but he's doing well. He's already 30 years old now, which is kind of crazy. And then Goldman with the Rangers, still in that same spot. How has he done? 23 points in 41 games. And he's getting paid a lot of money. Whew. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I escaped that contract, to be honest. He is getting a decent chunk of ice time. He should be doing better, but maybe he's not getting the shorthanded ice time he was with us. Huh. Because he's getting paid 7.5 to do that. So that's a lot of money for a guy that's not putting up that much points. So there is that. I do want to go to the contract stuff now because, like I said, we do have some important contracts this offseason. We do have two big RFAs, Blunden and Walter. We should start thinking about what we want to do with these guys long term. Eight years for Walter at 85% wouldn't be too bad. He's currently asking for 8.45 for eight years. Hmm. Do we lock him up for eight years? I think yes, because putting him next to a good passer like Ekholm is a no-brainer, especially once like Irving retires. We also have Blunden, who's another future piece for that top six. If we go eight years, he's not wanting too much. He might not develop much more than this, but he's uh, only asking for 4.65. So we could lock them both up on eight-year deals. But that would mean for sure Landon's gone. Varnarski probably would be gone for sure. Probably Jamal Hurd. Like, the depth on this team is definitely going to fall off if we block those guys up a little bit. We also do have to worry about Mills this offseason, too, where we could trade away his rights because he thinks he's going to be worth 7.95 in the next eight years, which is an legit starting goalie. So, hmm. Yeah, there's some interesting decisions going to be having to happen this offseason because I think Walter and Blunden should get long-term contracts in next episode. And then we have to probably think about who we want to trade away from, like, maybe the core going forward. Like in that top six, like, is it going to be Wilson? Is it going to be Bickle, Jacquezy? Not Aiden, because Aiden's going to be here until he retires. I feel like that's maybe what the play is, but I'm not too sure. So there is that. And final few things I wanted to take a look at was the draft class so far. What is the draft class looking like? Even though it doesn't really matter too much, I just want to know what it's looking like. Pretty standard draft. Yeah, looks like a pretty standard draft. Just some medium elites. No franchise guy this year. Is there anybody else as a gem yet that I could pin? Oh, I forgot to assign that scout for to friggin' OHL. Oops. We did find a medium elite gem, though. Our lowly gem, maybe. In Francis Beaufay. I'll pin him already. But uh, I do need to reassign that scout, because I almost completely forgot about doing that. And we're halfway through the season, which is not a great thing to forget about that too late. But at least we already had one OHL scout. So just to add another guy to that region for the next half of the season... Is what we need to make sure we do. So I'll do that quickly. There we go. Now the OHL will have double the strength a little bit there. So anyways guys. That's going to do it for this episode of our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode. So in next episode. I think we're just going to literally continue the season simulation. I don't think that this team needs to make any trades. Considering we won a 27 game winning streak. Uh, obviously I think we're going to fall off a little bit in the second half. And we're not going to win 27 straight games again. But this team is definitely cooking, and obviously, I don't really know how the playoffs are going to go, but I think we could easily win another Presence Trophy. So, let me sing down below, and I'll see you guys next time.